NASA says now is the ideal time to focus on the planet Venus, following new revelations about conceivable life on the world. If you were to look at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space organization referring to Venus as a planet from damnation. At the same time, Mars became our primary target. Such cautious naming of celestial bodies was not uncommon during the intense space race period. The Soviet Union, for example, focused on sending missions to Venus despite the planet's harsh conditions, showing almost no possibilities for life. The Soviet space program did not decommission the Venera program until the fall of the Soviet Empire. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand why. Join us as we analyze the declassified photographs from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in many ways, changing the international landscape and sinking numerous mysteries with it. The Soviets had a profound bias for secrecy, from running the most exceptional intelligence office in the world to being secretive about their potential extraterrestrial contact. Before the USA dominated planetary endeavors in outer space, the Soviet Union was a leader in the field. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and unsuccessful space missions, its greatest obsession was the internal, inhospitable planet Venus. In Russian, Venus is Venera, which became the name of the Soviet mission spanning from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the United States was focused on sending missions to the moon. In a strategic move, the Soviets chose to utilize their resources elsewhere. It's not entirely strange that the Soviets were fixated on the second planet from our sun. Did they anticipate using Venus's surface as a military installation? Or were they considering colonizing it after searching for any signs of life? It's hard to say why the Soviets were so focused on Venus, as their investigation journeys were conducted during the Cold War and they were not forthcoming about their aims and objectives. In fact, what we know about the Venera missions is based on declassified and unarchived evidence. And even then, it is challenging to pinpoint what the Soviets were seeking and if they uncovered Venus's secrets. The Soviets did not land on Venus once, twice, or even thrice. They launched 28 rockets to the planet, with 13 entering Venus's atmosphere and 8 landing successfully. Such complex missions positioned the Soviets as leaders in space exploration. While the USA was a close second, NASA was more intrigued by satellites and innovative setups than by investigating life on planets. Their interest in Mars came later. Your history textbook might not highlight this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of another planet other than Earth. It was also the first to achieve a soft landing on another planet and to bring back pictures and sounds from the surface. The Soviets had their own one small step for man one giant leap for mankind moment long before the U.S. did. So, why do we seldom learn about such milestone missions? The Soviet penchant for secrecy is a major reason for the oversight of the Soviet space program. By 1992, the Soviet space agency was decommissioned following the USSR's collapse, and the organization was revived as the Russian space agency, Roscosmos. Much of its historical information was lost or destroyed, which is why we lack a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 spacecraft into Venus's environment. If we were to make an educated guess, the Soviet focus on Venus might have been driven by cost efficiency more than anything else. This isn't to say that the space program wasn't hopeful about the planet's habitability. They were searching for signs of water presence, solar radiation power, and the general characteristics of Venus. Without these space missions, it would have been nearly impossible to measure Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, many cosmologists do not believe that the harsh planet could support life, given its extreme temperatures that can melt lead and its thick atmosphere that results in atmospheric pressure multiple times that of Earth. However, these are recent developments, and to disregard the USSR's contributions to the investigation of Venus is to edit history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was just to advance the space race. Exploring more habitable planets like Mars was not off the table, but was more expensive compared to sending probes to Venus. The distance between Earth and Venus averages only 40 million kilometers, whereas Mars averages 250 million kilometers away. Such significant differences in distance translate to substantial cost variations. Moreover, if the United States wasn't the world's largest economy, 
investigating Mars wouldn't have been as feasible. Different reports suggest that Soviet missions were unreliable and had significant technical gaps. The spacecraft were not suited for covering cosmic distances, and the agency had a poor track record of losing contact with its rockets. Thus, it makes sense that the Soviet space program chose a shorter and closer journey that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The United States wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move intensified the space competition and established Soviet dominance. Interestingly, the U.S.'s focus on the moon was a strategic choice. Despite failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, NASA's attempts at exploring Venus went awry, leading to what was dubbed the Venus Curse. This presented the Soviet Union with an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and USSR were determined to win the space race. The Soviets seized Venus as a milestone in the space competition, achieving something that their American counterpart had neglected. Despite the empire's limited resources and governmental issues, the Soviets repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure their position against the U.S. This focus on Venus wasn't without antagonism and misleading publicity. The American agency downplayed the Soviet obsession with Venus in popular media, dubbing it the hellish planet, while Mars became man's destiny. These labels were insignificant to the Soviets, whose mission was to demonstrate superiority over the Americans. Though the Venera missions are nearly forgotten today, they were profoundly complex, advanced, and ambitious. If we need to pinpoint an event that marked the dawn of the space age, the Venera investigations would lead the way. In the 1950s, the Soviets began experimenting with the design and technical details of their probes, and for the next 30 years, they built and launched interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Running concurrently with a highly turbulent Cold War, the Soviets were focused on optimizing their resources. The early years of the conflict provided them with more heavy lifting capacity than the U.S., which turned out to be beneficial. Building on their capabilities, the USSR began assembling and launching larger rockets designed to withstand high altitudes and great distances. The Soviets experimented with both manned and unmanned spacecraft simultaneously. Their academic community worked on precise trajectories for the Venus missions, while their Mars programs also ran successfully. For the Soviet Space Agency, developing complex instrumentation for these probes was crucial, leading to a major breakthrough in 1966. The Soviet agency launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and make contact with its surface. This achievement intensified the competition between the superpowers. Unlike American missions, which were marred by failures and gridlocks, the Soviet program made steady progress. By the 1970s, the USSR was able to conduct the first dual launches with Venera 4 and Venera 5. Historians view this decade as the most intriguing in space exploration history. The Soviet agency's choice to opt for dual launches into Venus was strategic. Interplanetary travel required advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data. Venera 4 was launched to survey Venus's surface, and its success led to the launch of Venera 5, which was specially designed to collect unique data about the planet. The Soviets aimed to break through barriers of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program entered a more advanced phase. Everything done up to that point had been about research, development, and optimizing their designs and technologies. The second decade of Venera missions focused on exploratory missions, with Venera 7 becoming the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet in 1970. The Soviets were also trying to record Venusian sounds. In the mid-1980s, Venera 13 surpassed previous investigations in complexity by capturing color panoramic photographs of Venus's surface, while Venera 14 gathered similar data. As one of the first countries to discover and recognize Venus, Russia has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. The upcoming VEDA mission, a joint effort between Roscosmos and NASA, is planned for the late 2020s or mid-2030s. The mission aims to study Venus's atmosphere, geological history, and potential habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, 
and possibly an inflatable to study the planet's environment in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends beyond technological achievements and international implications. Initiated by the Soviet Union during the Cold War, these missions represented a pinnacle of human creativity and determination in space exploration. Despite numerous challenges, the Soviets persevered in uncovering Venus's mysteries, a planet long thought to be hostile to life. The pioneering use of mechanical probes to study planetary climates and surfaces paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus's extreme climate, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic carbon dioxide atmosphere. Technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration, contributing to subsequent missions to other planets. The lessons learned continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions had profound social and political ramifications. During the space race, these missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, achieving success in the Venera missions was not just about scientific discovery, but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The global community closely observed each Venera mission, recognizing their significance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to send data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus's harsh conditions. The spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface, revealing a rugged terrain dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features. These images provided valuable geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. Despite their successes, the Venera missions encountered failures and difficulties. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical malfunctions that prevented data transmission back to Earth. The challenges of operating in Venus's hostile environment, including extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, posed significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the perseverance and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming VD mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. This mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's nearest planetary neighbor and to extend our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet. The Venera program's technological advancements were not only groundbreaking in their era, but also laid the foundation for future space exploration missions. The innovations developed for the Venera spacecraft, such as heat-resistant materials and sophisticated thermal protection systems, proved essential for enduring the extreme conditions of Venus. These advancements influenced the design and engineering of subsequent space probes and landers, highlighting the program's broader impact on the field of planetary exploration. In addition to their technical achievements, the Venera missions contributed significantly to the scientific understanding of Venus's atmospheric and geological characteristics. The detailed data on atmospheric composition, pressure, and temperature gathered by the Venera spacecraft helped scientists develop more accurate models of Venus's climate and geological history. These insights were instrumental in refining theories about the planet's formation and evolution, providing valuable context for comparing Venus with other terrestrial planets, including Earth. The Venera missions also underscored the importance of international collaboration in space exploration. While the Soviet Union spearheaded the Venera program, the subsequent global interest in Venus led to partnerships between different space agencies. The challenges of exploring such a harsh environment have driven the sharing of knowledge and resources, fostering a spirit of cooperation that continues to characterize modern space missions.